Welcome everyone Hi. to episode 7 through 9 of the Symphonic Gear podcast. The only podcast where people talk about Symphonic Gear and whatever other weird things we talk about. Tonight, as always, I am joined by my good friend, the Sea Tactics, the man who once attempted to drink all the water in the Atlantic Ocean in one sitting. How are you doing tonight, C? Uh, <laughs> that didn't happen. <laughs> um, yeah, that's that never story. happened. That's a, uh, a likely story. Uh -huh. I know. I know what's happened. How is that not even possible? <laughs> that didn't mean you didn't try. I never tried. <laughs> You know, if you don't try, you'll never succeed. <laughs> what are you talking about? Speaking of, if you don't try, you'll never succeed. Tonight, we're back to talk about Symphony Gear. We were on break for a few weeks, so we're back to get caught up, and then we'll be going back to our normal uh, Sunday night streams, where we talk about one episode at a time. And for this video, if you're watching live, we're going to be talking about all three together. If not, they'll be split into three videos. So, go enjoy those. For sure. Yeah, and... These were definitely episodes. They were. I don't think anyone can argue that much. Oh yeah, for sure. They, they're. I. I enjoyed. I think these last three episodes kind of. Uh, episode seven was like okay, that was really good. Episode eight was like that was better. Then episode nine was like that's way better. Yeah, it's like I think it also helped too since we were kind of behind watching, so we got to like watch them one night after another, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. And then, like, definitely, yeah, I was gonna say, then every episode kept building on it, and then we kind of got like the, a big climax with episode nine, but not really because there's gonna be even more crazy stuff uh, to come. Oh, oh yeah, um, also, probably should read the synopsis, shouldn't I? Yes, and I should actually go get my notes for episode seven. Symphokir XV, episode seven, cutting the tangled thread. The Chateau is activated and summons Shimha. Yep. yep, and then Elf Nine did things and then Carol came back and it was cool. Elf Nine got uh, Ragdoll. Yes, she did, and then she got mind controlled and then uh, nearly killed, but then the, she was rescued by those, whatever those things are called. Uh, th th robot lollies? We're going with it. I mean, they're kind of robots in this one, because it's here, like, Wait. Revived, but... Uh... Autoscores? Isn't that what... Yeah, that's it. Yeah, so, yeah, they came back. Uh, this is something that is, what, we're 58, 9 episodes into Symfo Gear now, just as a whole, and we're getting payoffs from... From in other seasons and callbacks that I never even expected. Like, they're. When would you ever think these three would come back? I thought there were four, but yeah, every season oh, has something from it pulled into this one. Like, we have the concert attack from season one. We have, obviously, Kirika and Sharabe yeah. and uh, Maria from season oh. two. But now we have Carol and her team from season three. And then before we have the villain from season four coming to help Hibiki. So like we're getting all of the all the characters from the previous seasons coming back, which is, I mean, how how many shows do something like this? Yeah, and because it's Simple Gear, it it works because like it's nothing you would expect. It doesn't completely make sense, but it makes just enough sense for it to be Simple Gear. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And and not. I mean, I don't. I, I don't think. I think I know now why this show is so highly rated on my anime list. Yeah. And I think that's because this season is for the fans. It's for the people who've, who've stuck with it for five seasons. And now that this is the end, they're, they're paying off all of these story threads and storylines that I didn't even know needed to be paid off to paid off, bleh, paid off in this way, but they did. And, I think that's awesome. I think more shows need to do something like this. This is just a blast to watch now. Yeah, well, I guess we'll talk about it later, but we got one of the things that I'd wanted to see for a long time, and we finally got that in Episode Nine. So that was, it's like they're taking everything a Symphonic Gear fan would want and doing that in this season. Pretty much, pretty much. I think, of course, uh, it's still... With, with Symphonic Gear, it's not always perfect just for the nature of the show. And, and don't get me wrong. Each, each, 
each season is is not bad. They're usually pretty good for the most part, but there's always like little errors in the writing or plot holes, uh, things that just don't make sense. Uh, that logic isn't used. That that happens in every every season right. of Symfo Gear. So and it's still in this season. But this is just really damn good. And I feel like they just writing as a whole, it's a lot more consistent too. And yes, you could probably nitpick some things if you wanted to, but it never feels like it's holding back the show. Well, it did a few times in the previous seasons. Right. Uh, the first, uh, no, not the first, the second season, most notably, it, it was like, at some point I was just like, I remember saying to myself, none of this is making sense. Yeah. It's like, it, it, it just, it pushed the craziness too far. It did. It did. And it, But in this season, like, usually I think most, uh, especially the last season, the villains and the antagonists have been kind of lacking. The antagonists in this season are incredible. Yeah. I, I love them. I love I love Milark and, uh, and Vanessa. Vanessa. And I love all of Noble Red. They're really good. I think what makes these villains so interesting is, like, how weak they are in comparison to the Sifogir users. They don't have the raw strength, so they have to be more like cunning and desperate to win. Yeah, they they're more of opportunists, which I really really enjoy. It's a different it's a different side, and I think Milark has said like multiple times that she doesn't want to kill anybody, but she just has to do right, it like anyway. She, she because... apologizes for it. it's like I don't want to, but I have to. Which I think in some in some scenes it's a little. It's a little cheesy, but for the for, but I get what they're doing with it, it's and also, it makes sense. It's Sifo Gear, so a little bit of cheesiness is kind of what it is. Uh, right, right, exactly. Um, I, and I mean, as with Vanessa as well. I mean, Vanessa has been hilarious, like really awesome. Oh, yes, like we. I think it was this episode. Like she went to uh, kick someone, or and she said, "You're a handful, so I'm going to use my foot instead." Yeah. This is like is the great. lines like that, how she her uh, boob missiles. No, you know, the boob missiles are are some of the best things about Vanessa. That is for sure. How how they retain their jiggliness, I will never know. Someone has to have way too much fun making. And the whole cast, I think, has a lot of fun making the show or the crew. Yeah, yeah, and the voice actors seem to have some sort of fun. Um, although, you know. I'm really sad this has to end this season because it's... I think we've said it a couple times when we were watching the show. This season is special because it's it's actually a good show now. Like, it's it's actually, like, a really good show. It's not just something you watch because you want stupid fun. There's actually a compar- compelling story, character arcs, all those things. Right. And, and it, it because this season is so good and actually a legitimate story you want to watch and get into and have stories and, and payoffs because it's paying off all those other seasons. I'd say get into Sympho gear. Yes. Like it's, it makes the, the final season makes everything before it worth it. Yep. I would agree. And you know, let's get into the episode seven specifically uh, and some of the things that happened in it. Like at the start of the episode, they captured the Elf Knight. They're using the Demon Seal on her to basically mind control her, so she would release the God thing with like Carol's power. Though I don't, Shimha. Yeah, Shimha. They were unleashing that, though. I don't quite understand Carol's connection to it. Uh, I think it's because she is one of the alchemists. Yeah, that. Could, so they are like using the power of the alchemists, which they aren't. So I guess that makes sense. Yeah, and, uh, and like also Carol, she's like she's really old or something like that. So well, and Carol also there's like, that... Carol also seems to be like one of the most powerful alchemists, or at least like her power and phonic gain is more than the entire Earth. Yeah, yeah. It's, so it it does make sense why they would definitely want Elf Nine and Carol's abilities because she's probably one of the few people that can actually aid them in, in what they they need to be done. Right. Um, yeah, so we have that. We have the Chateau thing, which is like the giant godlike thing. So the Symphony Years went to stop it. And I think that's... Yeah, so Hibiki goes to attack it. She punches it. But then it, they end up like wrapping around her and draining her of power. 
Mm-hmm. And that's like one of the few times where I've seen Kibiki's attack not work on one of them, or at least not work right. completely. Right. Uh, she attacks, and it just is not enough, which is, yeah, usually every punch we've seen like that, mm-hmm. that Hibiki uses, it's effective. Like, really effective. Right. Like, effective every single time she uses it. But this, this time it wasn't, which is very surprising. Yeah, and well, and after that, Tsubasa is just retreating, which is really weird for Sifu Gear characters to do. Right, yes. Yes, I think that has to do with her steel invasion and how it's changing the the way she behaves and acts. I think she's retreating because, well, if the songs don't work, that's, yeah, that's like, what the steel invasion is doing. She's so much she, less confident in the Sympho Gear's uh, power now. Right, right. And that's that's her whole arc right now is basically no confidence in, in her music, no confidence in the, in the music she sings to... To save people, it's all about f- brute force power. Right. And in this case, it kind of makes sense. Like, they've lost Hibiki, which is their main weapon here. So, it like, logically it makes sense, but it's definitely an unusual mindset for the show. Right. Uh, we also get the whole thing with Maria, which I thought was really cool. Yeah, that was her song, right? Right, yeah. And they have a little bit of a flashback that may have been the episode before this. Yeah, I think it was the episode before, but it's like she recognized the song that they were doing was the same as her song. And I don't think they fully answered, like, why those are so similar. Or why they're right, the same. I, I, think, I think we'll be getting that probably within the last three episodes, which is sad that this ends in three episodes. Ah, uh, yeah. So for some reason, I was thinking there's 13 episodes, which you're probably right. It should be... A hundred episodes. Right. Just make the final season of Simple Gear a hundred episodes. That would be the perfect way for the show to end. Exactly. And then and then afterwards, be like, well, it was so successful, we gotta do more. And then they do 800 more. I'm okay if Simple Gear turned into one piece in length. Yeah. I could think or... that would be stressful on the voice actresses, like singing and yelling so much, but I'm sure they can handle it. They seem talented. Which is... <laughs> Oh my god, I, c- I cannot think of how much abuse they're put through <laughs> doing this show. I just imagine, like, they get the script for the episodes and it's like, wait, what happens? What are we saying? And, and not only that, I mean, I've seen from, like, all the behind-the-scenes stuff of Dragon Ball Z, of them yelling for hours and how they can't even speak for, like, sometimes days after they get out of the voice booth. Oh, and yeah. I imagine it's the same for them as well. They probably can't speak for days. <laughs> Maybe it's a good thing they only do one season a year so says they don't completely destroy their voices. Yeah. This is true. Um, yeah. So, back... Oh, yes, and then uh, they're going after Elftine about to kill her, and then the, uh, whatever those things, the robot lollies from the previous season showed up to save her. Yeah, auto scores. Yeah, auto score. That's what the name is. I'll probably forget that again. I was... So, like, at, you know, the whole thing at the end where Carol reawakens in Elf 9, which is probably should work on the phrasing for that one. Uh, but when she comes back, you know, I expected her to uh, turn into an adult and grab her boob again, but it didn't happen. Yeah, we just got the Lily Carol. Which is ridiculous. Exactly. Gotta get, I just, I just want to see her grab her boob again. Not because I'm some weird perv. It's just because it's hilarious. What if she did it as a lolly? Eh, no, it's, it's just weird then. Yeah, well, it, it would not surprise me if that happens. Um, it would be interesting, that's for sure. Yeah. The reaction to the... Okay, I don't know what I mean by my one note, so we're going to move past that one. And, <laughs> yeah, and the fact that Carol was coming back, I actually kind of had that spoiled because Crunchyroll uploads clips with spoilers in the title sometimes, which really annoys me. <laughs> And screenshots of Carol. Yeah. <laughs> which was great, which is fun. I think I also got spoiled on that, too. Yeah, because I think Pretty episode sure. eight's uh, cover on the verb was just Carol. You know what's weird? At this point, I think it should have been expected that they are probably going to bring her back, Carol. But I didn't expect it. And it was really a surprise kind of when it happened. Well, yeah, considering how much the focus they're giving Elf Nine this season, I it makes sense that Carol would come back. 
but at the same time, it's like you don't expect that to happen, so you wouldn't. Yeah, I I, I knew that there was going to be a lot of callbacks, but it never occurred to me that Carol would be coming back in any way, shape, or form. Which I guess that's the sign that that this season is doing really good with its surprises because I could I was too wrapped up in in trying to see Elf Nine get her head chopped off. So yeah, you really wanted her to die, didn't you? Well, I mean, lollies are bad, okay? But if she died, then we wouldn't have gotten Carol to come back. Yeah, but Carol's a lolly now. Yes, but she's a cool lolly. She's trying to kill people, so she's a mortal lolly, which makes her good. No comment. Sorry, I'll, I'll save the screenshots for later. What? Oh, I can put random screenshots in here, and you can't stop me now. Yay! Oh. Yes, thank you for C for teaching me how to do the fancy OBS stuff. I cry. I should have never done it. Exactly. Now you now you will regret all your decisions. I already have. <laughs> okay, so since we watched this like a five days ago, we forgot anything else. So any other thoughts on the episode or stuff that we missed? Pretty good episode. Very happy they're doing callbacks and uh uh it's cool. Yes, I'm waiting so waiting for Fenate or the crazy doctor to come back. <laughs> Yes, I want Fina to come back so bad. I mean, considering what we saw in episode nine, it would not surprise me. But we'll she needs to, to come back. So, like, she just come back, come back, Fina, please. And then the crazy doctor can do things. Yes. Yes, I want the to crazy doctor should come back and be like, "You can't out crazy me, Fudo." <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, you thought this show didn't make sense before? Let me tell you what not making sense is." <laughs> oh, I love it. Yes. But yeah, good episode. Alright, uh, so we're going to end episode 7 now and move on to episode 8. So, yeah, I guess we'll do that now. Let me change the button really quick.